as you noted, foreign policy really is a top issue when it comes to this election. And I do want to talk about the Israel-Hamas war just in just a moment, because I'm curious what your response, what you think the response should have been. You're calling for a ceasefire. Are you also calling for the release of all hostages? What do you think Israel's response to the October 7th attack should have been then? Yeah, naturally, I think all hostages should be released. And I, I can also say this policy of Israel committing airstrikes could actually be putting hostages in harm's way. We don't know exactly where they are. So I think that's kind of a foolhardy way to go about this. Uh, so, But yes, I would naturally want all hostages released. October the 7th was abhorrent. And well, if it happened in our neighborhoods, we would be demanding some sort of response. Uh, and just like I wish someone had come to us on the 12th of September in 2001 and said, you know, maybe a global war with this kind of global reach won't really provide the, uh, the stability and the justice that you think. Uh, maybe we should be more concentrated on focusing just on going after bin Laden and after the terrorists. Uh, we should have had someone from our side, good war ally, we call Israel an ally, we should be able to say to them, you know, if you want a more safe and stable Israel, the policy of airstrikes and killing so many innocent people will not do that. It will only create more animosity for you in the region amongst Palestinians and other neighbors in the area. If you want justice, you should be much more surgical in your precision and going after those who have done wrong on October 7th. And I think I think a majority of people would support that. But what you're seeing right now in Israel is this blanket response. And even people within Israel, people who were attacked themselves, who may not even know people who were harmed here, are saying this is not the correct response. And as a friend to Israel, we need to be friendly enough to say, hey, this isn't the best way to go about this. That's what friends do, is when they see their friends doing something wrong, they stop them and say, let's think about this. And that's what we should have done on October 8th, as opposed to just blanketly backing whatever they do, and then saying, well, we're gonna try to create a corridor here, we're gonna put some humanitarian aid here while we give billions more to them. I don't think that's a really fair response. And I think uh, there's a lot of people who are suffering in, in Palestine and uh, the Palestinian territories because of this. I know what a President Chase Oliver would do October 8th, but what would President Chase Oliver do now, February 20th? Yeah, I would start calling for a ceasefire and a pullback of what these forces are doing. I would say, Israel, you need to change your policy right now if you really want to create peace and stability in the region. And yes, Hamas does need to release all the hostages. That needs to be part of this conditional ceasefire. But it needs to be put out there right now that the ceasefire needs to happen immediately so we can bring in the, uh, the, the, the aid people who are suffering. Uh, and I think that is a much better response and we need to be a partner between you know we cannot force these two sides to come together but what we need to make clear is that we need to see some sort of movement from both governments towards some sort of reconciliation towards some sort of two-state solution because we cannot continue this cycle of warfare over and over again it just is not conducive to prosperity towards safety for the israeli or the palestinian people and frankly i'm tired of seeing u.s tax dollars being spent to kill innocent people around the world. It is morally wrong what we're doing.